Thank you for joining another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So today is Valentine's Day. That's the day we're recording. So we decided that we were going to talk about temptations and how to prepare ourselves for them and overcome them. So um, we have a... A few things to talk about today. The, t- the temptation is around us a lot, but especially this time of the year, we've got Valentine's Day right behind it. We've got Easter, um, and there's always tons of candy that are shoved into our face. So yeah, as a matter of fact, the gym this morning, the protein, the pro- they had protein shake samples, and they shook little teeny like candy coated little hearts into them. Oh, so I no. Could, I'm that one. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I could have, but I mean, just like, it's like, you know, there's enough other stuff in those that, but anyway, uh, I, I think the point is it, it took, it took us a while, at least personally, it took me a while before I could easily walk by, you know, but, you know, fancy heart cookies or whatever the heck you know, it was, you know, and, and for a while I, I gotta be honest. I mean, I would want one, and I just wouldn't, you know, wouldn't wouldn't uh, usually, you know. But uh, I think there's some tricks. I won't say tricks, but there's things that you can do to be prepared, to think through stuff that that, that can kind of make it easier. And I think that's kind of the goal for today. Yep. Hopefully, you leave with and not not all of it's going to be 100% like what you know your you know matches to you, but at least it'll give you some ideas. Hopefully. So do you have? Do you have any go-tos when you have a sweet tooth? Yeah, so I'm going to start this off by saying my first um, statement would be change your relationship with food. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that that's easier said than done, but I think that all of us too often lend that crutch or that substitute, and it's not really dealing with the the problem. So that's the first thing I want to start with is to just say food is fuel, and as soon as we change our relationship with it and stop using it as a reward and a, a treat um, and stop using it for entertainment, that temptation has a lot less impact on you. So there's the, there's the coach in me trying to make you <laughs> think your way through it instead of just using a crutch. Yeah. Um, we will give you some, some options to that as well, but... Um, really, I just, I think that too many people start out with, you know, Valentine's Day, I had chocolates and all of this stuff, and now I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm completely oblivious to any other method to get past this, so. Yeah, and and on that, I think sometimes when people start to fall off, we'll call it falling off the wagon, then they're like, well, I already blew today, so I'm just going to eat this entire pack of Girl Scout cookies. Right. And that kind of stuff, it's just, it's just not helpful. So I agree the mental um, aspect is there and changing relationship is super important. And I guess I kind of have too. But I do have some things that I eat on occasion. And, and keep in mind, everything we talk about today, if, if, you, if you had it a lot of uh, on just a second. There we go. So if you uh, if you had a lot of it, then it it would be something that could easily um, impact your blood sugar and stuff. But some of my go tos, like like if I'm craving something, uh, I I could eat a red pepper, just like rip it open to so like a red bell pepper. Yeah, red bell okay. pepper. I could totally just do that. I mean, there's been times where I've gone to a farmer's market and I just wanted a little something and, I'll, and you know, the kids are getting ice cream or something like that or somebody or everybody I'm, we're with. I was in Florida once and my entire family's getting ice cream and I'm like, I am not doing this. But there's a farmer market right there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go grab a, a red bell pepper. And I literally just paid the guy and ripped it in half and <laughs> why, the, why my family was having ice cream. So that was the way I dealt with that. Um, for my kids, um, you know, to give them something that's a little bit different. I, I, I like those little teeny uh, grape tomatoes. They, they kind of, they, they're, I'm, I'm not sure what the sugar content is of those, but for things that kids are having, um, I, I do kind of, I said, I do 
I think it's funny that I call them treats sometimes. <laughs> um, do you do, you do uh, any chocolate? Um, very rarely. Uh, I, I mean, you know I bake a lot of different <laughs> stuff. Um, I'm not a big sweet fan, so I don't personally eat a lot of chocolate. Uh, for me, if I do feel like I need sweets, and there are certain times that I do want them, um, I actually will put salt, just take a take some salt and put it on my tongue and just let it dissolve. Uh, I carry a baggie of salt around with me. And so that does seem to help a lot. If I'm at home, um, I will uh, just open up a jar of dill pickles. And I know you hate dill pickles, but I'll take a swig of pickle juice. I do think that's weird. And, and that does kill uh, any craving. That one actually works for my husband because, again, he was the sweet freak. Um, so when he would start having that and I was trying to break him from the, the cycle of substituting one for another, he would start uh, doing the dill pickle juice. So that is, that is one option. Generally, when you want something sweet, it's because you really are lacking something else. So you may want to try to start experimenting with that to figure out what it is you're lacking and then try to supplement that instead of substitute a sweet. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea. I think if I think back about my walk, I believe when I first started corporate life, I, I did probably have a sweet tooth and I preferred stuff to be sweet. And now over time, my taste buds have completely changed. And if I had can't think of an example of anything, but uh, like, okay, well, like maybe some of those uh, keto type baked good stuff. I mean, I still have some of those where I'm just like, oh, this is too sweet. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and uh, so a comment on chocolate. I mean, I've, I've literally eaten the 98% before, and I would have never been able to do that before. Yeah, when I very first started keto, and I think it was because I was not necessarily craving sweets, but I was craving something, and it's really hard to identify when you're not in tune with your body. Uh, so I would break a little bitty square of um, 100%, or I think I think 98, 95. 95 or 100 is what I have um, in the cabinet. And so I would break a little square of it off. And again, it doesn't take much because it tastes disgusting, but you just let it melt in your mouth, and then that does help with the um, chocolate craving as well. But if you're not at that point, you could take a 70 and then graduate to an 80. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or you could even take a high and then add some of your own sweetener to it. Yeah. Yeah. So then you you know you're not getting some of the garbage the out of the, the chocolate. The baker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody who bakes all the time and doesn't like to eat it. So, so Baker, have you ever used sweet basil? I have not. And when you brought this up to me, it was intriguing. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna attempt it. Yeah, I've it's been it's been on my list of things to try, and I've just never got around to it. You know me, I, I haven't still haven't made manic yet. So <laughs> if you've been listening for a year, it's been on my list also for a year. So there you go. Um, I think you just got to be careful with the fresh basil. What I've heard from people is it's you you can't just throw it in there and let it cook. It's it's more like a, so when you do the uh, recon, you have to look at when you put it in because it, it is uh, impacted by cooking. Uh, the other thing that I've done, and this was like a long time ago when I was experimenting, I can't, I can't believe I'm going to, I'm going to actually air this out, but like for a <laughs> while I, I used to just buy like pre-workout ingredients, like buy the, like the bag. <laughs> and so instead of, instead of making the one that had all the like stuff in it, I would just get the powder and I would like basically shoot it like a pixie stick or something. <laughs> and it tastes like eating sand. However, there are some amino acids that actually do have a sweet sweet tooth. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can Google it. There's a, it's not something I necessarily want to recommend because it's kind of, a, kind of, well, you know, like you're sniffing powder or something. But so there's there's always that approach. And again, I'm not sure why I even recommended it. But just picture big bags of 
how well, to... Now that you've told me all this, I'm kind of glad that you forgot to bring it in. I know, I did. The plan was you was going to bring it in, and I was going to try it right, yeah. while, while we were recording. So I'm yes. kind of glad that did not happen. Yeah, it's definitely something that makes me nervous when I get to security. <laughs> in case I ever got it. <laughs> What's this baggie of white powder? Well, it's going to be acid. Go ahead. Uh, so... I I had a go-to, and I got to be honest, I haven't made this for a long time, but early on when I was transitioning, which makes it sound like I had a problem or something, but um, (laughs) I used to make these, I used to make cookies because I still kind of liked that, and although I haven't, um, sometimes I make them for kids, and uh, there are, we'll share it in the show notes, but there is very easy shortbread cookie type recipes, and the key is not to find one that has a ton of servings <laughs> because literally uh, I have a tendency to I'll, I'll go ahead and admit it I don't I don't often bake where I don't just eat the entire pan of whatever it is <laughs> if it's a treat <laughs> so literally just six ounces of a dark chocolate I use 90 percent um, like you mentioned you could make your own with unsweetened um, and uh, I, I just I'm lazy so I just grab the 90 percent. Uh, three tablespoons of butter, a fourth a cup of cocoa powder, two eggs, and some vanilla, uh, two, two teaspoons of vanilla, and some baking powder, and cream of cocoa. I mean, it's cream of tartar. <laughs> cream of cocoa. I don't even know if that exists. But yeah, like that'll be in the show notes. So click through if you're looking at the album art. And that for me is they're not sweet. They're not that sweet. But it's definitely if I'm going to a party or something like that, is a, it, that's my go to. Uh, so, what do you have a go-to? So I don't, but I do have. Um, I in the beginning I made quite a few um, cookies and different breads and stuff. So right, one of let's, them. Let's, let's be honest. The first ever we didn't even call it Ketonian Corner. That is true. It was just a activate round table that you came to. You brought. We brought cookies for everybody. I did. I did. So, so, so set that expectation. I mean, so you didn't wear the cookies today. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, it, well, in the beginning, I was trying to convince people, I guess, that I didn't eat weird. I mean, everybody that I ever talked to, because you put a name on something, they automatically think that I eat lemongrass or, you know, something bizarre that nobody, yeah, that nobody would eat. And so I was trying to let them know that you could still have these things and the ingredients are not bizarre. And anybody who knows me, and we've talked about this a million times before, I'm not one that's going to go buy crazy stuff like psyllium husk or xanthan gum and do some crazy thing that you just never heard of these recipes or never heard of the ingredients for these recipes. And it needs to be quick and easy. So... Um, that was that was really what I was what I've always been about is just to do things simple. So mine really is butter. Uh, you have we I put sweetener in it. The the recipe actually calls for two thirds of a cup of sweetener, and for me that is way too much. And those cookies I did not like because they were very very sweet. You're talking about the ones that you brought in. Correct. I would agree. I yeah, they, they were, were too sweet too. they were way they, too they were sweet. Um, but I think you and I were the exception because most people who gave me feedback on them thought that they were the sweetness was fine. So again, I think it's where you're at in the journey. Uh, for me, even in the beginning of the journey, it was too much. But um, but again, there's there's uh, vanilla extract. There was almond extract. It uses almond flour, uh, baking soda, and baking powder as well. The recipe really called for icing. But when I tasted the batter and realized how sweet it was, I opted to leave the icing off because I thought that was just going to be overkill. Is it this one? Yeah. This, did, yeah. You, did you say ricotta cheese? Oh, no, I did not say ricotta cheese. I mean, that was one thing I forgot. That's the weirdest thing yeah. about these. It, it, there is. You, like, skipped over, like, the whole thing that makes this kind of weird. Yeah. You want everyone to still think you're weird. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, anybody who has Italian dishes or Italian treats probably would not find that weird because that's actually common. But these cookies do have uh, two-thirds of a cup of ricotta cheese in them. So there's that. <laughs> but, again, it's not a weird ingredient. You can find it at any grocery store. Fair enough. It's just a little odd that 
We look for it in cookies. But. So sweetener. Um, what what kind of sweetener do you use? Because that's something that's we've talked about before. It's a little controversial. Yeah. So you use the fake sugars. So personally, for <laughs> baking, I like to use erythritol or an erythritol um, stevia blend. I have attempted to use straight stevia, and in my opinion, it leaves a very bizarre aftertaste. Um, a lot of people find stevia bitter, and although I don't find it bitter when I use it in my coffee or, or my liquids, um, I, I find that it after you heat it, it just leaves a very bizarre taste. So I don't notice it when I use it with the erythritol blend. And the erythritol blend, you can get it. It's, the brand names are Swerve or... Um, so if you were going to go to like a, like a local grocery store, like a Walmart, it would be called... Um, so I don't think Walmart carries Swerve. You can get that at Amazon, but they do carry, um, I think it's called Pure. It's P-Y-U-R-E. So basically you look at the type of sugar to know. Right. Or you can just Google it. Yeah, and, yeah. and again, you want to be cautious with those because when you buy bags of sugar or bags of sweetener, a lot of times they have either malodextrin or dextrose. So just look at the ingredients. Um, and if it is only stevia and erythritol, it's fine. But again, I generally... I generally lean to just straight erythritol. Same with stevia. Stevia's got two different because of stevia, and I think they call it stevia in the raw or something like that. Yeah. It's a little, bit, little, little difference. Yeah. Okay. So going back to your recipe because we kind of went through it relatively fast since a podcast, so they can't exactly see it. We'll so have it in the show notes. It'll be in the show notes. But how, how in the world does ricotta cheese turn into a cookie? You know. Um, I don't know. Can you tell at all? No, not at all. So it's not really all. just kind of replacing the combination of the butter and the egg and everything. I think it really is just used as a binder in to keep all of the ingredients because you're using baking or sorry, you're using almond flour, so it doesn't have that gluten um, to bind everything. I think that's what the purpose of the ricotta in this recipe is: mm-hmm. is to just bind all the ingredients. So if they were going to make icing, let's. Yeah, they were so not at that place yet where, and they felt like it needed a little extra. Yeah. What, what, what kind of, how do you do a keto icing? You can use um, powdered sweetener. So again, I use the erythritol stevia blend. You can purchase it already pre-powdered, but it's more expensive. So quite honestly, I put just regular uh, granulated sweetener in my Nutribullet and zip it for a couple of seconds, and it will make powdered. Um, so it's like confectioner like sugar. Any blender? Um, I don't know if any blender would work, Perfect. but yeah, it. Yeah, I mean anything that's going. The blades have to be low because you're not going to have that much quantity. But anything that has the speed enough that will break those uh, granules down into a powder, it, it would work just fine. So that's for consistency. Right, because with the icing, um, you don't want the grain. Uh, I mean, you don't want to be able to feel the, the granules of that sugar. And unlike regular sugar or real sugar, table sugar, your um, artificial, or I'm not going to call them artificial because they're really not, your um, sugar alcohols do not, um, they do not dissolve the same. So when you make the icing, if you don't use confectionaries, uh, con- confectioner sugar, it, you'll actually be able to feel those grains of sugar in your mouth. Gotcha. So, so it's, a te- it's like a textured thing. Right. So you just mix um, the powdered uh, sweetener with almond milk and then add a almond extract in it for the flavoring of the cookie. Now, I have done the same exact base of a cookie and changed out the almond for lemon. And I did that that day as well. I, I brought say, lemon I, I and almond. Lemon ones, so yeah. So if you didn't have almond milk, could you use just like heavy cream or something? Or is uh, the the consistency, yeah. So you could. It's going to change your flavor a little bit, and it's also going to change the, um, the consistency of your icing. So the purpose of – or the ingredients of these, this icing is actually very thin. Um, so it's, it's more like a glaze on the cookie versus an icing. But if you use something like the heavy whipping cream, you're going to get more of an icing consistency. 
maybe what you're thinking of when you think of the cake. Right. Gotcha. All right. So I've had these, right? These are the ones that we have. So yes. Have so they are, I would never know that they weren't, but your results may vary, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and again, it, your journey is, where you're at in the journey is going to tell because some people have eaten them who were not keto at all, um, ate just a regular sad diet, and they did not know the difference. And then there are other people who have eaten them that they were like, whoa, what is the sweetener in this thing? So, I mean, it's it's your taste palate, really. Okay. So let's switch gears a little bit. Okay. So why, why would we bring up two, or maybe maybe not switch gears, but why, why would we have two recipes? Why would we share those? Neither one of us really do this anymore. Right? Neither one of us bake cookies anymore. But why would, why would we share in a recipe like this? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, again, it's really in where you're at in your journey. If you are still in a place where presented with all of the sweets from Valentine's Day or Easter or whatever, your the first birthdays or the first anniversaries, if you're faced with those and you think that you may not be able to make it through that temptation, um it's good to have something on hand. You don't have to eat it if you don't want it, but if it's there and you're faced with the temptation of regular sweets, then you've at least prepared yourself to be able to, to make it through that difficulty a little bit easier. Yeah, so and, and part of that is being proactive. Yes. If you... Or let's take Mike, I me, mean, let's take me for an example. <clears throat> I mean, we, we, my, my mother does it, so I'm not going to say we like, I <laughs> but my mom bakes cookies with my, my daughter to, so she doesn't feel left out. So when they go to like a Girl Scout function or something like that, they're still, they still bring something. They don't feel like alienated. Don't know why, but we tend to alienate people and we probably we've talked about this a little bit but it's amazing how at like if you have a healthy mindset around food you almost get not chastised but it's amazing how it works they're like what do you mean i mean you know, especially at family functions what do you mean you're not going to have grandma's pie like you're insulting your grandma or something yeah it's, and uh so well, and that really goes back to, to the relationship with food, right? Our society has made it to where that's how we reward people. That's, that's what we do in family functions. Everything that we do is, revolves around food. And so when you have made the decision to be different, then, you know, you're the one who's, who's strange because you no longer have that same mentality, yeah, and um, if any of you guys have a scenario that you want us to talk to, to just comment on what we would do, uh, just hit us up in the chat. But so let's talk through a few of those because I mean I think that's some being prepared is you know we've talked about having an emergency meal. Yep. Do you have so so for my kids, I've got a few healthier options of fruit and nutish kind of bars or. Um, Primal Blueprints got some, which you would, you know, that are higher in sugar. I mean, they've right. got monk fruit. Uh, do you remember what the sweetener is? It's monk fruit, I think. Right? I, I think it is monk fruit. But for me, I have super active kids and whatnot. I would rather have that in the in the diaper bag when we go somewhere as opposed to, you know, them running around with eating tons of ice, icing and right. cake. I mean, because everybody knows it's funny, right, when you're – when you're a kid, when you start eating, you don't really differentiate very well. I mean, they know, you know, foods. And the more, it's funny, the more carbs, I mean, you can literally see the sugar impact on it when they're, when they're young. At least I'm speaking from my personal. I can tell when my, when my, when my daughter went somewhere and got, got crap. Regular sugar, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's also a challenge because, you know, at some point she's got to make those decisions for herself because she's always going to be in situations where there's going to be right. that kind of stuff. So how do you kind of walk through and provide that? So what would you do if uh, you had a work function? 
It's at a restaurant, Avanti's, we'll call it, and uh, it's, it's an Italian place, and they've got, you know, five or six things sitting out, and they're all full of carbs, and it's a little thank thank you lunch, or it's a pizza party. So, you know, how do you, how do you handle that? So, it, quite honestly, I just don't eat it. Um, so, I have made it very clear that this way of eating is the way I eat, and I don't let people try to guilt me into doing something. I spent a lot of years being unhealthy and overweight, and for me to be at a healthy um, a healthy weight and, and be healthy, um, that to me is more important than somebody wanting me to eat a slice of pizza. So on the most part, although they still find it weird, people still think I'm, you know, acting strange or they get a little bit bent out of shape because I don't conform to the pressure. But I have found that for me personally, I have a strong enough personality that doesn't bother me. But what I would suggest for people who aren't to that point, that they can't stand up to that, either try to find something there that you can eat. If it's pizza, pick the toppings off, eat the pizza, probably not the best thing, but it's one day, it's one meal, and then go back to doing what you should be doing. Um, if it is a pasta or something, you're probably going to have a salad with it. So just eat a salad because most people don't shun you if you're a vegetarian. So they, they may not even mention anything if all you're doing is eating a salad. But there's always something that you can find if you aren't a strong enough person or at, a, or at the place in your journey that you can stand up to people by doing that. So, I mean, that, that would be my advice is to just find something as close to what you should be eating as you can and don't stress about it. It's one time. Don't eat a ton of it, right? But just do it to join in. So if you have a going away party at work, you're going to get a cake? No. <laughs> no. I thought about it. I decided I would. Because just because I chose not to eat that kind of stuff, I figured somebody else wants a piece of cake. No, but they're, we're talking about you and I. So you are... <laughs> Very social. Yeah. I would be embarrassed to have the party to begin with. So all of the attention being on me is not something that I would do. So I would opt out of the party period. Oh, you're saying, you're saying, yeah. yeah. So you just ghost. You yeah. Just ghost out. Yeah. I would just <laughs> wave as I'm walking out. Yeah. No, I, I could you're not right. do that. No, I, I, yeah, I guess you're right. I am more social. So <laughs> my, my heart is. And it has nothing to do with the sweets for Valentine's Day, but it has to do with the temptation is the after hours at a brewery mm. because I really enjoy a good beer. And that's something where I've had to, I still haven't quite found my, I, I rarely drink anymore because it just recovery is horrible for me now. <laughs> Some people would say you're out of practice, but I would, I would say that it's just it's not worth it. Um, but I still struggle with how I order if I'm out with people, uh, you know, because gin and tonics don't really work for me and, like, those type of things. So I still struggle with the alcohol piece. Yeah. And we, that's something we I, I haven't figured out yet because I, I'd prefer a, an ice-cold beer if I had yeah, it, that's one thing I have not. Been and to be with. honest with that, like I, I don't drink at all, so it, I don't have the issue. But there are people that I'm around all the time that do. My recommendation, quite honestly, my nephew drinks. My recommendation to him is to drink vodka. Yeah. Um, it's it's <clears throat> as close as you're gonna get. Um, but also for like most women, they don't like to just drink straight things, so they they make those little drops. They're the, what are they, Mayo, M-I-A-O or whatever oh, you can buy. Yeah, um, exactly. they're, they're not great, but again, neither is alcohol. So if, if alcohol is it's something like, that like you want to do. Light, but yeah. That kind of thingy. Yeah. And, and again, you have to watch them because not all of them are yeah. going to be as good I, as others. I dumped a crystal light packet. You know, they got those little packets. I yeah. dumped that in a bottle of vodka once. <laughs> it was actually not bad, but holy moly, 
there was no governor on the amount of alcohol I <laughs> drank at that point. So it was, yeah, yeah, that was, it was not pretty. But I mean, if you are somebody who did drink mixed drinks, that's an option, right? I mean, a lot of people drink the cranberry and, and vodka. So you could get the different flavored drops and just carry them in your purse yeah. if that's, you know. My, my go-to right now is if they have FN vodka, the cherry FN vodka, it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Unlike okay. a lot of, you got to be careful when you go with those. The, the flavor, vodkas, yeah. A lot of them have sugar in them, so you yeah. be somewhat careful with that um, in a diet soda. Yeah. And I, and I don't really drink diet soda anymore, so now it's kind of struggling there. Well, and again, it's all in being prepared. Most of the time you don't just accidentally go out. You know that you're going to. So just yeah, but do some a little bit of research. <laughs> <laughs> all right. On. Okay. Well, one thing we can't bring up to, to lunch uh, for samples so are... <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> we can't do that. No Tito's. All right. Well, anyway, hopefully uh, we gave you some tips. So just to kind of recap a few of the things. Be prepared, obviously, is the probably the biggest theme across all the stuff we've talked about. I mentioned a little bit about my uh, bell pepper. Uh, if I am thinking about something, the, the, the thing about that too is it gives you a nice crunch too. That's kind of nice if you're kind of crispy. Yeah. Um, so. So the one thing that we didn't touch on, and although this doesn't really fall in line with the candy, is temptation in general. My temptation is salty. Like, that was always my downfall. Oh, really? So, like, potato chips? Not, not so much potato chips, but, like, a cracker or something of that nature. That was more huh. where I loved. Um, wisps. Yes. That's enough salty, crispy, crackery kind of thing. For yeah, me. and those can be dangerous for me. Most people are like, oh, my gosh, those are so so rich, you can only eat a couple. Yeah, well, only eating a couple only worked a couple of times. Because <laughs> after that, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm loving these. So I actually had to quit buying them. Um, I, I very rarely buy oh, those Parmesan yeah. wisps anymore just because I, I, have noticed, I recognize that. I've noticed for me it's the protein. I, I, I'm surprised at how much oh. protein they have in those because I, I, I like to put those in my avocado and just eat with a spoon. Yeah. And wow, did we get off topic. <laughs> Aren't I great for that? Well, it's, it's not off topic because it is a temptation, right? right. You, just, you, have to, you have to know what your temptations are. And, and why I brought it up is because I don't want everyone to think that, oh, gosh, candy, that's not my downfall, right? Because, I mean, candy is most people's, but it's not everyone's. Yeah. So there are temptations outside of uh, the holiday and what's wrapped around your chocolate. Yeah, a ginormous steak. I can't help yeah. but eat the whole thing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, so if, if somebody has some temptations and they want us to weigh in, we're going to start doing question and answers again. We've kind of... We kind of uh, just hadn't had a session like that lately. So if they have a question, what should they do? They should email us at ketoniancorner at gmail.com, and we will, get your, um, we will get your questions put on the docket, and we're going to start doing those the last show of each month, right? Is that what we decided? Right. Okay. It'll be the fourth. The fourth Wednesday. Yep. If you're, if you're uh, following along live. And uh, and we'll probably get a little bit. We, we've also gone away from exercise and uh, fitness side for a while, and I, I think so. If you have those questions too, you can kind of oh, absolutely re, re, uh, feel free to post those also. And although I haven't warned you yet, I, I do think that we should do like a Google form or something. I know they shut off the Microsoft forms, but I feel like we should be able to have them submit. I'm in a form online to submit the question. But email Check works. into it. Yeah. Email. Well, email, Facebook, All Twitter. I don't really. Well, don't don't tweet it to me because I don't I don't really follow that too much. That one I'm bad at. But all the rest of the social media, I do keep track of. So. All right. Or our website. There's a form on the website you can give comments and feedback. Speaking of comments and feedback, go out to iTunes. Give us a review because we need those, and we want yeah, to know what your. We really need to ask for those. Yeah, we want to know what your opinion is. <clears throat> if you like, if you like the forum, if you want us to change, talk about different things, just let us know. Give us some feedback. Yep, topics, or if you'd like to uh, talk about a particular thing you've you've been working on. Uh, yeah. 
in your area of life, hit us up. Uh, we, we love experience, you know, people talking about their experiences. Absolutely. We're all about interviews. <laughs> all right. So, you going to tell them about our upcoming interview or no? It'll be a spread. Well, we do have a great one. Um, so, this week... John and I are going to curse ourselves by saying that. I know. But he did He did send the confirmation. It's on his calendar. All right. So hopefully I don't have to come back in our next show and retract this. But we are doing an interview with Tom Naughton. And for those of you who don't know who that is, uh, he actually is Mr. Fathead himself. So he did the Fathead documentary, and he's also done Fathead for Kids. So it is going to be awesome. I'm I'm already fan geeking on this, and we haven't even done the interview yet. So yeah, or decided questions or anything. Yeah, right, right. So that one we are actually recording this week, and then it will be released next week. Um, All right. So on stay, our podcast. So stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Bye.